this is like New York, you know, but there's something weird going on with it. And the systems, you know, that you would normally be used to, and they're kind of like having to revert back to old systems, like paper systems and stuff like that. And it's like, this is like a cyber attack that's taking place. Welcome back. I'm here with Daz Smith and Edward Reardon. Gentlemen, it is an absolute pleasure to have you both on the same show. So today we're going to talk about this little thing that you did called the event that changed the world that may have caused a little bit of a, a stir. So with that, let's just get started. And how did it happen? And at a high level, to the degree that you can talk about it, what did you find? And I'll just start with Daz, left or right. Okay. This is a strange one for us because as viewers, you know, we sit down every week and we go through our results for targets that are blind to us. And we were working a blind target, but all, all of us as viewers didn't describe the target that was assigned to us. We only found out, I think it was like two months later, what that three or three months later, what that target was. And the target that they wanted us to look at was a future technology in something like 10 years time, that would be a life enhancing future technology. But none of us as viewers described that target. We all went off into something, what we're calling a more luminous event in the future, which was, you know, as we'll discuss, a bit more destructive. And the interesting thing for us as viewers, we all were shocked on this, was, uh, Edward, how many times were we tasked that target? Three times in the end, weren't we? Well, it, it was two times oh, yeah. officially, but in one of the tasks, there was a subtasking, a, a second tasking. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that's how it happened. But yeah, it, we kept getting this as a target and we kept going somewhere else. I mean, it was really unusual for us because like Daz is saying, you know, there's a four remote viewing core team. And then we have a, an additional viewer who's been doing some viewing work with us recently as well. And usually we're not going to all go to some other place you know someone's gonna hit it <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. we're gonna have a couple of the viewers that are going to really nail it and then the rest of the viewers will have you know supplemental stuff to support it but yeah. we didn't go anywhere near this thing we didn't go anywhere near this thing at all which was really weird for us to advertise on through glass darkly email through glass darkly ads at gmail.com Yeah, so we all described a future event, and I think we all had big kind of energy kind of events involved with this to mm -hmm. a larger degree, and other smaller events as well. But it was a very kind of globally impacting, very socially impacting, um, yeah, destructive, life-changing event that was going to happen in the near future. And I, I think some of our data is a direct match for what's happened in the Palestine area. I think we were describing that as, as almost like the start kind of keg of the, this whole event Kettle, scenario. Kettle Australia. Yeah. But I don't think the main stuff that we described, the really catastrophic, bigger, more far reaching stuff has actually happened yet. And uh, uh, my, my data alone was kind of indicating 2024 for that. Uh, I don't know if the, if the other guys did, uh, you know, I'd have to look back through it. Cause yeah, you know, bear in mind, this is like three months or us ago as well. So, yeah, we've done quite a few targets since then. So it's a bit cloudy in my mind. But yeah, I indicate 2024. And I'm waiting for then to see if all my data falls out in a term that actually came through in the in the data there as well. Oh, well, great. Yeah, let's, great let's, let's, well, <laughs> well, let's we paint the picture, it. right? Like, like, why 2024? I mean, I think without going into remote viewing or precognition or anything like that, 2024, there's a lot of destabilizing stuff that's happening. So let's paint the current picture, right? Right now, we have kind of Russia, Ukraine is still ongoing. I think there was a leak in Ukrainian media saying that the Ukrainians lost something like 2.2 million casualties, so killed or wounded. And I think it was kind of a mistake. It came out in Ukrainian media. There was another report that came out from the U.S. military saying that of the forces that entered 
Ukraine, 87 percent of them or soldiers had been lost, whatever that means. Right. So if you can recall, I think it was between 135,000 and 150,000. Again, I can't verify any of these numbers and, you know, anything that the Western press puts out, you can't really trust anymore either. Anything the Ukrainian press puts out, you certainly can't trust. But anyway, it's been pretty brutal on both sides. And at the end of the day, though, the Russians have a three to one population advantage, right? So it's kind of like one of the analogies I can think of is like the U.S. Civil War. The southern states had a much better trained military, but in the end, the side with more resources always tends to win. So anyway, regardless, the counteroffensive didn't do great. It's kind of in the stalemate right now, but Putin, as I've been saying since day one, all he has to do is wait. You just wait and see it through. Then you had the Israel-Gaza incident, which is still ongoing and brutal and all sorts of things. And what that did to the U.S. is we are not on a war footing, right? So I think Raytheon and and Lockheed Martin only just began to ramp up their Javelin production and things like that. The other thing is we have an enormous number of microchips that are produced in Shenzhen, China, which is another issue. We have all sorts of pharmaceuticals that come from China or, or at least are manufactured in China. Additionally, in Taiwan, in particular, over 90% of advanced semiconductors are produced on the island in the world. So if something were to happen there, the United States, regardless of how important Taiwan is otherwise in the geostrategic calculus, it is life or death for the United States and the Western world. All right, you use 90% of advanced semiconductors. We are in some deep doo-doo for at least five years because there was a massive semiconductor bill that the United States passed in recent years, I think it's the last two years, that is seeking to help Intel fund and build a massive semiconductor fab in Arizona. But those things take, you know, multi-year projects. So if something were to break out, you have these two wars, we're already cranking out weapons and materiel for the ukrainians but now we're also doing so for the israelis so a lot of our stocks for nato and the western world are way down yeah add to that sorry i'm just painting the picture so i don't yeah. want to yeah. scare people but add to that we are going to be in the most contentious election i mean every election in the united states is the most contentious election in history but it really is yeah and you're going in there where half the country thinks the last one was manipulated to some extent. So again, I'm not going to openly discuss any of that because I want people to see this YouTube video. But anyway, there's massive distrust in the United States. The right in the United States typically supplies the soldiers for the American political class. And that side of the political debate has been so alienated or that demographic has been so alienated by the current powers that be that none of them are encouraging their children to serve anymore. So as a result, and another reasons too, you have more kids smoking marijuana, you have like yep. Americans are getting fatter, all sorts of things, mm-hmm. but there's a recruiting crisis. The United States military in private, I believe was openly discussing downsizing an entire division because they couldn't, fulfill their recruiting goals. Instead, they got rid of like 8,000 special forces professionals, which I don't think is a great thing to do, but they kind of had no choice. Suddenly they changed their recruiting criteria. It's almost comical on Twitter seeing the response, but they were actively advertising to a one demographic, which is extremely small. And they started going back to the traditional demographic And it was like overnight and it was jarring and people noticed it. And to the point that people like, oh, we must be going back to war now. Mm. And that demographic, I'm not going to specify, but all you have to do is look at who took 85% of the casualties in 
Iraq and Afghanistan, and that's the demographic we're talking about. So for once in the last hundred years, the demographic that loyally served and sent its sons and daughters to the legions are no longer sending their sons and daughters to the legions. So, okay, just painting the picture. We're going into this contentious election. Mm -hmm. Daz sent me an article from the Washington Post earlier this week on December 11th. China has been rehearsing is the word I would use. And that's not what the article uses, but their cyber unit has been actively attacking transportation nodes, communication nodes, power utilities, particularly it looked like centered on the West Coast and Hawaii, which is interesting, right? That's indicative of what you would probably would try to do to disrupt a response to an invasion of Taiwan. Mm -hmm. yeah. In April or May, the tidal forces are the most favorable for you to cross the strait into Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Also in August too, I believe, but Okay. If you're planning for something like this, there's other things too. I think the Chinese have been stocking up on food. I think they have like a year and a half of grain kind of stored up. They've been building up on their coal stocks yep. because they're heavily reliant on importing fuel and those sorts of things. So that kind of just sets the stage. Station. So if you're the Chinese and you're actively doing these things, I'm not saying it's the best move to move into Taiwan, right? Because over time you could try to subvert through elections and corruption, just kind of get what you want. Unfortunately, the Taiwanese don't really, for the Chinese, don't necessarily see themselves as Chinese, right? There's like a huge percentage of young people see themselves as Taiwanese. So if you're Xi, and he also, by the way, he also passed a bunch of bills that limit the amount of data that we can see. Mm -hmm. And also, I think in February of this year, this is the first time the Chinese population declined. Okay. Yeah. So if there is a time for him to do it, it is 2024. And it, it is in April or May of 2024. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, the reason I'm talking about this is the event that changed the world. There seemed to be a cyber component to it where the lights go out. When the United States and China clash, the world will never be the same, especially when forces beyond reality threaten to intervene. What if the United States went to war with the People's Republic of China? How would these rivals fight for supremacy on land, sea, air, and across the stochastic streams of time? What wonder weapons would be unleashed? What horrors would emerge from the irradiated sludge of the South China Sea? What heroes would rise and forever change the course of history? Tread into the deepest and darkest dimensions of the multiverse, gaze through a kaleidoscope of fractured realities, and bear witness to the disturbing visions of World War III from today's greatest minds in science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Weird World War, China. Available now from Bain Books at Bain.com. And again, I'm not saying this is what's going to happen, but oh, oh, and, and by the way, this is this has got nothing to do with any of this. But anytime I have a book coming out about the U.S. fighting somebody, an event happens about a year and a half later. <laughs> so Weird World War Three, which is a book about the United States fighting the Russians, came out in October of 2020. And, mm -hmm. you know, well, maybe more, more than a year and a half, but no, that's probably about right. So then we saw Putin invading Ukraine. I have a book coming out on January 2nd called Weird World War China. So with that, <laughs> is any of that resonant with some of the remote viewing that you did, particularly with the event that changed the world or some of the cyber stuff that you went through, Edward? And let's start with the event that changed the world, and then we can pivot to the cyber stuff. Well, the, I was talking with Dick about this the other day. And in relation to the, I mean, you call it, you know, our session, the event that changed the world, or we call it the Illuminosity, so whatever, man, you know, it's, a, it's the one where they show the bad stuff is happening. And I was telling them, I'm like, it's like kind of like a musical band and they're making songs 
and they don't know which ones are going to be hits or they don't know which ones people are going to like. That session, I didn't think anybody was going to like that one. I, I, when we got the feedback for it, I was like, oh, okay, well, luckily we did the Bob Lazar thing because I, I don't know what's going on here. It wasn't until October 7th happened and the reverberation around the world of that event and what that could turn into mm -hmm. in a very, very realistic fashion. You know, the connection through Hamas to Hezbollah to Iran, boom, you know, and it's just like the whole, it was, because I, I remember in my, I don't remember all of my session, because I tell you, we did a lot of work on it. You know, we're talking lots and lots of pages, couples, multiple sessions. And I remember in one of them was specifically a ship in the Mediterranean Sea that had something on it that was being delivered. And it had the people there that were assigned to make sure it gets to its destination. And there's a button to push, you, you know what I mean? So you can kind of get the, without saying things specifically, you get the idea of what was in there, but it was in that specific part of the world. But when the event happened on the seventh and then the reality of that, how those sessions that we had just, I mean, literally had just debriefed would fit into it that a scenario that that was representing it then it was a big shocker it was a big shocker like oh man okay this is like world war three that what, what i was going through was this is world war three i think we may have completed our remote viewing we don't <laughs> might not have to remote view anymore this is it <laughs> you know this is like we're future forecaster group okay we just forecast the future and the future is the shit's gonna hit the fan right now and the thing about it, it was it wasn't like we had ah oh, okay here comes some guys on paragliders and they're m massacring thousands of innocent unarmed people it wasn't that it was bigger stuff than that it was like what could come I mean, not that that wasn't big. I'm not downplaying that horrendous massacre that took place. I'm talking about how governments then prepare for what to do next. And that mm -hmm. those were the those were the ramification kind of things that were coming in all of our sessions, not just one or two, but all of them. And then it was like, oh, wow, man, maybe I should start digging that hole in the backyard. I, I got food prepared, you know. It, it was a shocker of, of that level. I mean, I, I literally was like, typically, let me I'll characterize it. Typically, remote viewing sessions don't do jack for me. You know, I'll react to mine. I don't really like looking at other people. I'll react to what happened to me. But this one, I was moved and very concerned by all of our work. And from what else came in our sessions, this event is literally, that was just like the beginning. That was the beginning. Yeah of what we were seeing coming down the pipe. Yeah. And again, like Daz was saying, there's the strange thing about it was that that wasn't the target that we were given, you yeah. know? Right. We, right. That's what's but, significant. That's what's significant. It was so energetic but, that it, that it, it your attention. The target. Yeah. And, and you got, and you got to look at the timing. We, not only did we miss it again, but then we debriefed it anyway. And it, and we debriefed it a week before the 7th of October event happened or something like that, a week before it happened or a couple of days before it happened. So the timing of it, I look at the timing of it like, okay, we have a narrowing window of time before a very big event is going to happen. So we kind of got to throw whatever the target it actually is out the window on this one, you know, subconsciously, we're not aware of this. And we got to put this thing in because this is the big event. We need to get this out. Yeah now you know that that's how i that's how I felt after the event happened i mean Daz, what was your so we're, yeah go ahead Daz. for me the biggest shot was as i said you know it was a we missed the top we all missed the target we never all missed the target and not only that the, the taskers recognized or thought okay these guys have all missed the target and they didn't tell us that we'd missed a target or we'd describe the same thing, but they set the target to us again, but with a slightly different language to the target, 
we didn't know this of course and then we all missed it again and we all described the exact same event again but in even more detail that's that was the mind-blowing thing about this is yeah we both we all four of us missed the target twice in a row and on the, both occasions we all described the exact same thing again but in more detail this just doesn't happen to us in five and a half years of working here this has not happened once and yeah it was just a magnitude you know we you'd, you ha you'd have to see the video of all four of us and the taskers mm -hmm. and sat there with our mouths <clears> open as because you know it's the first time i'm seeing e these guys data and it's the first time they're seeing mine and i might say and oh, this is on I, like a portion of this is on the crypto viewing site right it is yeah on, yeah on future forecasting yeah and i'm like going oh sorry guys i think i completely miss this all i'm talking about is some kind of big event like a nuclear bomb or something and then you see their their eyes go what the heck that's what i got right and, and we're all that we're all on camera going how so it was just the whole shock of the whole event and the magnitude of it. We don't usually get things of this magnitude, which is why we all think that there's something significant to this that we don't usually get. You know, this kind of rarity for us comes along you know, once in a thousand remote viewing sessions of, of us doing something like this. Yeah, the one that really comes to mind is the, what's the name of that island? T Tunga or something like that. We do the, the monthly events every month. Every month we do the coming months events. And three or four, uh, might have been all of us. Oh, yeah. We all, we all had this big column of mushroom cloud. We didn't say yeah. what it was. We didn't say, oh, a nuke is right. going off. All we said, all I'm telling you is I saw this big column <laughs> with a mushroom cloud on top. You know, I had the drawings of the buildings yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And so we get on, get ready to do the we get ready to do the debrief. We weren't even recording yet. I'm on there. Daz is on there. Dick is on there. Ames on, and Daz was like, oh, man, I got this big mushroom cloud. And I almost <laughs> fell out of my chair. You know, we weren't recording yet, though. I almost <laughs> fell out of my chair. I'm like, holy shit, you did. And then we go through. We all had it. And we were like, what the hell is this? Like, again, we didn't say it was a nuke bomb. We didn't, nothing. Right, right. So then a couple of weeks later, that volcano blows, and it's a giant yeah. mushroom cloud exactly how we saw it right. and I even in my session the, the one of the camera angles had the buildings had the colored correctly and with the cl cloud behind it so and that was a big thing yeah. you know and so when these big energetics come up you know we're tuned into, into that kind of thing you know we want to get the important thing yeah you know what what's important you know and w without going into our own fantasies, you know, or our own biases, you know, we're trained remote viewers. We put our biases off to the side and just get into what we're perceiving and leave our biases off, you know? All right. So what sorts of things did you see the, that you can uh, talk about? Because because you can get the full thing on future forecasting, right? Yeah, yeah. My session, I'll usually say, you know, when I feel good about, about one of my remote viewing sessions, I'll say, I love the session. Regardless of the content, in that I was pulled in to scenarios and w was going through them in a very detailed manner and become completely consumed into the remote viewing session. I love those. And I'll tell the guys, guys, I loved this session. Just so you know, I feel really good about it. And in this one, like I was saying, it wasn't like, oh, we see guys coming in with guns. You know, that's, that's not really interesting. That might be something you might see from us in our monthly events. Oh, yeah, I see some guys shooting other people. And that's it. You know, mm -hmm. these were way more detailed than that. And so like in mine, it was a lot of things interacting on a high level of, of government, the possibility of passing over power to other someone else. And there was somebody in a facility monitoring radiation levels, monitoring seismic activity and watching it all on the screen with a big cloud, you know, like the rest of us that had those types of things, the ship and there's somebody on there with a device you know, more part of a bigger scenario, 
you know, that when we did the debrief and we kind of fit it all together, it was like, it was like you're watching a Tom Clancy movie or, or book or something. Just a lot of major pieces that were conspiring together into, into one thing, a bigger event coming in, you know? And so like the Israel-Palestine thing, for me anyway, and I, and I think for the rest of us, was like, oh, this is the kicker. This is the start. This is the start of that. And I, I'm telling you, man, I was freaked out. I, w- I had a big giant lump on the back of my neck because I was reacting such a sh- negative, you know, such a, I don't know, I don't know what word to describe it when, after that uh, on the 7th. I was like, holy shit, man, this is it. What we saw is going to start to unfold right now. And I was so freaked out about it that I began to physically <laughs> have a reaction to it. I had a giant lump. On the back of my neck, I couldn't even turn my head it, without being, in, it, it was too painful. And that's never happened to me before. Never. Yeah. I watched your session, particularly on the, all those machinations and on the political side, right? It was kind of creepy. <laughs> like, yeah. Because, I mean, obviously, like, what do we have next? We have an election coming up. So, yeah. yeah. And there was like these transfers of power. People were the kind of the vibe was we can never let they can never know this sort of vibe to it, right? You say a little bit more about that to the extent that you can without getting because you don't really know. It's like you know, for all you know, it could be a local election. We're not saying like you weren't saying it's the presidential election. If just like or even we, that it's right. just like when we saw the big mushroom cloud we don't we don't know what it is all, all i can say is there's a big mushroom cloud so but right. yeah in that session uh, yeah i'm doing my best to attempt to describe a transfer of power of some sort with high level people and how other people feel about that and how that might happen And this Uh, isn't necessarily the United States, or is it the United States? I couldn't, I can't tell you. I I didn't say this is the United States. I just want to make that clear. Yeah, I I don't, I didn't say that in in the session. I don't know. I don't know where I was. Like I said, the the only thing that that I could place a label on in those sessions was that this ship is in the Mediterranean Sea. That's the only place Mm -hmm. that I could tell you where I can, you know, there's a location that I can name, which is very, very significant to what's happening now. And it makes it, I'm I'm still freaked. Honestly, I'm still freaked out about it. Even uh, even two months later, yeah. You know, because I does, none of us feel that that this is. We feel that this is that was the start of it. Yeah. Does anything to add on? Because I think you saw something with something that was either on the coasts or directly inside the United States or both. Yeah, several times in my data on this luminosity event, I um, it felt like uh, USA was involved in a catastrophic way in all this, a, a catastrophic way, and maybe even a political way as well. I think there was probably both involved there that I was getting a bit mixed up in. But yeah, it definitely felt a USA flavor to me with the data that seems to be a catastrophic energy. You know, all I can say is it's a catastrophic energy event. It seems to come from above and radiate outwards. And I think, you know, and I'm just being honest here, most of us in our data on working this target had data that felt like it was nuclear in some way. I think we mentioned words fallout, radiation, cesium, cesium was mentioned, radiation, radiation poisoning I had in my session. Yeah. Yeah. So putting all that together, to me, it does feel like some kind of, yeah. I would say nuclear attack of, of, or bomb scenario of some, of some kind. And I have to be honest, I had USA come up with, with, with in regards to that. Yeah. And, you know, even some of my sketches, I sketched the rate, you know, cause I felt it radiated outwards in waves. And I even sketched, I think that I felt like it was like it radiated out somewhere like 12 miles from the epicenter of wherever this would happen. So, so was, I'm talking about a, a huge, big, you know, energy event that i was describing you know lots of disruption yeah yeah so definitely us and definitely very bad 
and it felt like it was an action that led to this. So uh, an action led to a retaliation. And I wrote here in the session, I got the session here. I can see it here. And this is the words that, you know, really shocks me about this. I felt that, and I wrote this, it, this can go either of two ways. Uh, and one way is bad. And the other way is very bad. And that's what really stuck in my mind with this whole target and everyone's data really is that it, it just, it just wasn't looking good, this entire event scenario that was going to go into a occur. Based on what you saw, was the effect kind of a nuclear incident or was the cause a nuclear? So what I'm trying to get at is, is there a possibility this wasn't a nuclear weapon, but potentially like a reactor meltdown associated with the, you know, an attack on the grid? That is possible, although I think I did see, uh, and I can't remember what the other guys got on this as much, but I think several of us reported motion of something moving from downwards from, from above. Now, whether it's multiple things going on and we're getting a bit mixed up, um, that, yeah. that could also be a possibility. You know, if there's planes or an aggressive action in the sky, you know, that could happen at the same time as something on the ground level. We could be mixing up data. So I wouldn't like to definitively say on that, but yeah, right. uh, you know, I think several of us did have fast uh, kind of moving action, which was aggressive above. And then we had the, you know, the explosive event in there as well. That's all I can say, really. Are we putting two and two together or is it that, you know, uh, something that hits from above? It could be either of those scenarios. I have to be honest with you at this stage. Well, Edward, you kept repeating the word ejecta of some sort, which is usually a word that corresponds with like a comet strike or you know, me, you know, meteorite, asteroid sort of stuff. So it, I don't it recall does, having, uh, I don't recall having that word in my session. Are you sure that was out of my session? Ejecta? I, I didn't have the word yet. I had similar data in that I had an AOL which is an analytical overlay of that this would be sold as a natural event. And then I wrote underneath it, but, but was it? And then I, you know, I also had a, an AOL underneath that of a, an asteroid. So it might be sold as an asteroid event, but you know, there might be yeah, something more to uh, it. Maybe I'll trip, maybe I'll, cause I know you've been doing so many, so many different <laughs> remote viewing sessions that it's hard to track. But if I recall, it was something I think you said, Edward, it was, and it's also along the same lines that Daz was saying, but this word ejecta kept coming up and you were saying, I think you were saying that it was being sold as ejecta, but that's not necessarily what it was. Right. I, yeah. I, I just remember it. I, I remember very clearly ejecta because there's someone else who's not a remote viewer that I've spoken to who also mentioned that word. He kept saying ejecta, ejecta. So I, uh, I'm not going to try to add on. Yeah. If you I don't, don't, if you don't remember re saying that, uh, it could have been in there. Okay. Like I say, yeah. you know, when we're in a remote viewing session, we're, you know, we have to have these things written down because we won't remember them. It's like remote trying to remember a dream. <laughs> And right. then afterwards, you get to try to remember it. And it's like, I, I still can't remember it. I, I have to go back and reread it. Yeah. But so, yeah, could it be in there? Those were the, the, the type of things that, that, yeah, we were experiencing. Like I had in my sessions, the nuke plant. I was inside of what seemed like a nuke plant. I don't know why I was in there. It mm. didn't seem like it was melting down. It didn't seem like it was blowing up. What I found in there, because I had to go look around, what am I doing in here? And that's where I was sitting in this office with this guy. And he's looking at a computer screens and they're monitoring seismic activity. They're monitoring radiation levels. And they're just, they're sitting there, they're watching everything happening. I got mushroom clouds on the screen. And they're just like, these guys are sitting here watching this, whatever's going on. They're sitting there, they're watching and they're monitoring it, which was the real interesting thing. Again, this kind of big picture thing not just some random attack, like a random terrorist attack, you know, maybe a few people knew about the, the sense in there was no there, this whole thing is being monitored. 
high level, you know, not Joe Schmo on his computer somewhere. This is someplace that's like a nuclear power plant or something like that, you know, and they can yeah, monitor it's, it's all it sounded it, it sounded very NORAD, like Cheyenne Mountain sort of. I, I even mentioned Cheyenne Mountain in there. Yeah, I was like inside there, you know, inside there, place like that. And I, I, and I think that. Daz was focused on like the Denver airport or something, right? DIA, the Denver International Airport. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I definitely, yeah, definitely had an energy event USA based. That's all I can say. It felt like a huge energy event in the USA, maybe on the coast, the coastal area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I guess well, it was very, the Cheyenne Mountain was the second location that I did, did mention it. You know, the funny thing about that is that I forgot about that session. And we're, we're doing the okay. debrief, we're recording it. And I'm like, okay, there, you know, that's my stuff. And Sean says, no, man, you got another session. I'm like, what are you talking about? He says, yeah, you got a, another session. You got it. That was the one with the Cheyenne Mountain thing. And I was like, dude, I don't even remember doing that session. I don't, I don't remember anything. So I had to go through it. And it like happens with us all a lot. When we do our debriefs, like we're going through our session. Like, Damn, I remember, I remember that. I don't remember that happened. Did I say that? Did I write that? I don't remember any of that. And so, yeah, that, you know, there's just so much. You you, you really, uh, you know, not to be so salesy or whatever, yeah. but you got to go see that debrief, man. I mean, there's so yeah. much stuff in there. It's like. Where, where can folks find a it? Movie. I think it's future, can, futureforecastinggroup.com, I think is the. Yeah. We'll have to give you the link. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I'll, I'll just grab the link, but yeah. it requires a subscription, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah, we've now there I is a we teaser piece there is, I, on, yeah, yeah, there we is a teaser piece right? on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. We so, release I, a lot and of I stuff. I think there might free. be. Yeah, I think there's. I think there's stuff on crypto viewing, right? Yeah, you have some yeah. of it on, like just the very beginning of the meeting. I think all, but all yeah. the details are on. Um, future forecasting so people can get but kind sure. of a, an initial view just to answer because you know, i'm literally just you know looking at the the data that i wrote as we're talking here and you know you were talking about the uh mm -hmm. did i did i see is it a possibility that it, uh one of these explosions because bear in mind we might be describing multiple explosions and stuff here um exactly you said could it have come from you know uh, a facility that blows up rather than being hit. And I did write here in one of my parts of one of my pages, I sensed that an explosive energy event, but I don't feel a hit or a strike. It seems to be more of a sense that land is ejected up and outwards mm -hmm. from the actual thing itself. But, you know, so almost the, like a volcano or, yeah, you know, up and out like that. But again, in other areas, it looks like there might be something coming down. So maybe we're talking about yeah. multiple, you know, because maybe there's multiple luminous uh, events, events here that we're all kind of picking up on, in, you know, which might happen in some kind of invasion or war type scenario. Yeah, that's what's interesting about it is that, is that like, uh, like I was saying, we weren't seeing guys coming in the paragliders and we could, mm -hmm. with that specific event, it was, we would look at this long chain of events that one thing leads mm -hmm. to another, this leads to that, that happens because that happened and blah, 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 this kind of growing larger scale event. And like a chain reaction. Really interesting. Yeah. It's a total yeah. chain reaction. Yeah. And so we can go through our sessions or somebody else can go through them if they want to, and then start picking timelines on those things as they chain react off of each other. You know, that's, that's what's fascinating about the whole thing. You know? Yeah, because it's not your guy's job to determine what it is. It's just to record your perceptions, right? Yeah. And that's yeah. typically an analyst to kind of go through and try to, like, you're not in the business of interpretation. You're just in the business of recording, yeah. you know, observing, recording, and reporting. Otherwise, you risk the potential of analytical overlays and yeah. you know, all that good stuff. So I just know that, you know, in, like in hindsight, you generally you guys, you guys are tend to be right, not in your interpretation, but in, you know, your data tends to fit what yeah. ultimately happens, right? You can usually piece it together. 
no, I, we're I, about the su- oh, good, good. Go I was just going to say, uh, and I think as as we kind of indicated and showed here by our no- <laughs> by our knowledge that we're having to reread our sessions, is that we we do so much of this work mm-hmm. that we do, you know, even though this is big events and most people would be dwelling on this for months, we're we're like because we did this in September, we've moved on, and uh, you know, both of us couldn't you know, until we re looked at our RV session, like we couldn't even remember the bulk of what we'd written down because we've probably done about another hundred. RV sessions since then, so it's just one big mush within our heads. That is so true, man. So yeah. true. Now, Edward, what about this cyber remote viewing session you did about a cyber attack? Well, we were given that as a task. That was, I'll get, let me get you the date. This was November of 2022. So, November of last year, again, we're just, it's just a target. We're, we're given a target ID, go do this target. <laughs> you know, that's all, we, mm-hmm. that's all we ever get. That's what we get. And I can go over some of my session here is that the first thing that happens, the first place I go to in this session is I'm in New York and I could tell I'm in New York. I'm in the street. There's the buildings. I'm like, this is like New York, <laughs> you know? But there's something weird going on with it. And the systems, you know, that you would normally be used to, and they're kind of like having to revert back to old systems, like paper systems and stuff like that. And it's like, this is like a cyber attack has taken place. And now you can't just go and bip your phone or bap your card. They got to like write something out and give you like a receipt or something like that something like, uh, like, like that. And it was specific, you know, and I, and I called it twice in there. There's a cyber attack element here, taking this down. And I literally, because like Daz was just saying, like we're saying, we can't remember our, our sessions. We've done too many of them. I got the session right here. And what's interesting is that what Daz was just saying about in his session, he had Reference, I, th- I think you said this, Daz, specific references to April. I have in this session, this time period feels like between now and April 2024. So we're continually getting these time references in our minds of specific times. So now, what, you know what's interesting about this, and I haven't watched it yet but Netflix just put out a movie called leave the world behind. I was just listening to some commentary about, I haven't watched it yet, but it's about a cyber attack and they, and they have, they show New York and apparently what's going on in New York, you know, and you don't want to be around there in the event of a cyber attack, you know? And so again, just another element of this coming in and with potential timeframe, That comes up along the lines of, you know, we got five and a half years of of this stuff. You know, we could probably map out if we took all of our work for the past five and a half years, we Mm -hmm. could probably map out what's going to happen for the next 25 years in sessions that we didn't know was what it was about. You know, we we had the start of the Russian Ukraine war within a day for February 2022. For a session that was done in in October, September of 2021. You know, the target was February 22, 2022. What's going to, is anything going to happen within a two day time frame before or after? You know, we had in it. Boom, launch, rocket launches, start, was the war starting, you know? So a little blippy of information. And, and our sessions are loaded with those things, you know? Edward, can, uh, sorry, you, the session you're talking about, was that actually a, a cyber attack target? The target, the target was to look at a potential cyber attack, yeah. And that was November 2022, did you say? It was in March. Uh, March, was in March 2022. I'll, I'll have a look at that. It's just that I'm quite, uh, because, uh, I'm quite shocked because, at a time after that, 
and I, 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 I sent this to Sean earlier. I, you know, as part of a news thing that I did, I talked about a cyber stroke, see a, a, a triple attack that was going to happen on the U S um, and that had a, a, a kind of cyber attack feel, but it also had a, a, a sea kind of water attack feel, which kind of led me to feel like it might be like New York based as well. You know, the, the feeding from it. So Yeah. Bearing in mind, I, I can't even remember that we did the cyber attack. Well, I'm going to have to go back through it now and see what yourself and I did on that to see if it matches my other <laughs> data. That yeah. That's what we said earlier. We've done so much of this stuff. It's in, it's in databases, in an archive, and we haven't even gone through it and analyzed and compared our own data on, on all these targets. It's, we're always on to the next one. Yeah. We debrief it. We're on to the next one. We forget about it. Boom, 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 mm-hmm. you know? We're always moving forward. We're never sitting there looking back at our stuff. Unless we do an interview like this, you know, we'll get a chance to look back at our stuff. And even now we're like, what the hell did I even write? I got to go back and look at it all. And we can't remember because we're always moving forward, you know, and that's what's awesome. And we love that. You know, it's always, we're not sitting there. Oh boy, I did this one great session. Let me talk about it for 10 years. Like a lot, like man, most remote viewers do, <laughs> you know? We're always like next, 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 next. You know, forget about the last one. Let's next, next. You know, we're we're all. We're, it's a bigger thing. I think for us, it's like it's not. Let me hang my hat on a good session, and pat myself and say, well, ain't, I, "Ain't I great?" The in in my opinion, the the importance of the of the of us as a group for the past five and a half years is that we are trying to look at the important things that are coming and document them you know and that's what's important not yeah. you know oh look at me i you know <laughs> none of that you know we're just not that i mean we all have egos man you know we wouldn't well, be talking to you if we weren't e- you didn't have an ego you know a healthy ego yeah, but but i think i think you guys are too humble to like if, surely though you have somebody in the background who's scoring like remote viewers and stuff like that be- Probably yeah, not, would, not associated with us, probably. Yeah. But but the person who gives you targets and stuff like that, or is like is there someone in the background who's just compiling data? Because I know that in Stargate, they actually had someone that would score. And what it did was it helped the government quantify who had heightened skills in certain areas. So like Lynn Buchanan, for instance was very good with like in reporting smells right like just like weird stuff like that that they could quantify but in terms of like from a business perspective you could also use it to help market your services to organizations that are more skeptical anyway just a record but that, but that literally you can just i'm sure lynn buchanan would be happy to describe how they did that well, process and stuff i'd say and as will he'll have his own his perspective as well i don't even think about it i i it's not even what people i i do my sessions i, I everything right here in my laboratory i do my sessions i send them in i don't talk to anybody i talk to the guys and we do our debriefs other than that i have no connection to what happens as far as business decisions go and, and daz i probably say the same thing but i i'm completely out of that loop by choice, big time by choice. I don't want to know what's going on. All I want to do is get on to my next yeah. viewing session. And that is all that I care about. Okay. So somebody in the background might be doing that. They just Maybe. don't, they just don't share it. Okay. What do yeah, you think? Dad? If somebody's you, running the business. Dad, what are you, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? I don't, we do so much work. We put out so much content. I don't think we have the bandwidth for anyone in the background to to do that that's why uh, we we are probably missing out and losing some of our data if i'm honest with you you know like i completely didn't remember that we did a cyber attack that, that edwards just showed me about and i've literally just gone on our server and found it and found that i did an rv session on it but i can't remember ever doing it we have so much data and we're moving so fast yeah i just don't think we have the resources to fully make use of all, all the data we're getting and cross-reference it by the way there's a a software engineer I, I know, and I asked him about like how would you compile stuff like this, right? In a and it's poss it's very possible to do. It's just a it's a pain in the ass because you have to. Yeah. N- 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 I'm not talking about scoring, but I'm talking about ingesting like all the illustrations and stuff like that using some yeah. OCR recognition technology. 
and coding things and because uh, the the difficulty with remote viewing is you're getting you have um, written da- you have verbal data but you also have illustrations so you yes. would need to have an algorithm that recognizes or kind of some machine learning algorithm that recognizes sketches and and things like that and then can tabulate them create a database right generate associative and, clouds that look at and different things can, yeah. uh, figure out okay they're such bad spellers. Well, I know I am. I'm a terrible speller. So they'll have, it'll have to compensate for, oh, okay, uh, he's probably trying to say this. Because, <laughs> you know, the spelling goes out the window. We All remote viewers will tell you that. You get into, you, once you get into an actual remote viewing, the spelling goes out the window, man. You're in the different side of your brain. A different part of your brain is working and not the part that cares about spelling things correctly. You know, so... It would have to be able to interpret all that, all that, yeah, and also read handwriting. That's 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 yeah. the other little quirk, <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. But uh, uh, there's stuff out there that's you know better at that than you would think. But um, but it's still you know it's still probably a little bit of a challenge. All right. So if you had to leave the audience with some final thoughts, oh, go ahead, Des. It sounds like you were about to say something. Sorry, I was just I was literally just this moment looking at my cyber attack data <laughs> that ever put me onto, <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, yeah, above ground. All right, you, you got to cover that before we before we say well, goodbye. It's just so shot, really literally, it's just a shot to see this kind of stuff because I was like, well, I don't remember any of this, but I'm talking about. And again, the dates match up. Dates going far out to uh, 2024, April, event one, July, August, event two, September, October, event three. And then, you know, talking about... Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you just say April? Yeah. yeah event yeah. one? Oh, yeah, my, we uh, both, look, we it both hasn't happened it. yet, so so we could... Uh, yeah. But my mind is I, yeah. is like uniquely tuned to see connections, but we made the connection at the beginning of the episode, right? That yeah, doesn't mean weird. that doesn't. Yeah, that doesn't mean that that's what it is. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, but if you know, the Chinese I'm, I'm, are going to do a cyber attack. It's in April. Event one, I got an explosive, loud, violent, destructive event. Event two, person based. Event three, movement of people displaced, all kinds of moving west. Yeah, so I again, me and Nina Edwards put me onto the cyber attack stuff. I'm have, I think we should go back through and have a look at what we had about this cyber attack stuff it, as a as yeah. a, you know as a group unit within future forecasting and see see what that might have indicated based on what you so know the when, newer when data. Were the that got. It was when November were the dates? You said that one was April. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I had mine in April 2024. Daz had April 2024, and. I had some July, August stuff and some te- September and October stuff as well. Yeah. And I had some stuff that yes. starts in 2023. I actually, I had some stuff that really started in 2022, but then it starts ramping up because my scale's going up. It ramps up in 2023, and then my final stuff is in 2024. Yep. And then I had the random dream with the number 456. So take that what you will, right? Mm. right? Look, it could be nothing, but it could be, but it could also be April fifth at six p.m. Now six p.m. is the easy part because it's six p.m. someplace around the world at that time, right? So that's right. Whatever whatever date it is, it's you know six p.m. is correct. But you know, does this have anything to do with any of that? I don't know. Probably not. But uh, well, it's 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 just one of those things, like you know. We're talking about it now, and we'll have to talk about it again in May of 2024 and see. If, if or, we still have sometime, internet access. Right? If we, yeah, well, we'll know. We'll know by that. Yeah, yeah, we'll but, know. You know yeah. Or, or this time next year or whatever, we'll, we'll be able to, we can go back and look at it and say, okay, yeah. this is what happened. This is what didn't happen or, you know, or whatever, you know. And that's how we look at it. We're like. Yeah. This is an experiment. We're doing the best we can. And, you know, we get our feedback. We wait for sometimes feedback takes years to get. And you just, you have to just put it, be okay with that. And look, it sounds like, and look, I can weave a compelling story. It could be all, we could like my, the narrative that I piece together using all this data could be complete hogwash. And it's not, but to be clear, like, 
the narrative I put together is not what you guys saw. I'm just taking various inputs and constructing yeah. a narrative that is a potential. I could be wildly off, but well, I'm sure it might be possible for us to share our our older 2022 cyber attack data with you to see see what you you think of it. Yeah, that would be awful. Anyway, any final words for the for the audience for this episode? Just for me, it would be, you know, just be aware of your surroundings in your local area, the world. And, you know, we're not saying all this is going to happen because, you know, we are wrong as well as being right. But we do have quite a good record, a track record of being fairly accurate, predicting future events. So just make sure you're as prepared as you can be. You know, it doesn't hurt to have a few weeks worth of bits and pieces at home, candles, batteries, spare money, you know, that kind of stuff just to see you through for any kind of thing that could possibly happen in the future, not just the kind of things that we're reporting. Edward? Uh, yeah, I totally agree. Take it with a grain of salt with all the rest of your data, just like remote viewing has always been. The military didn't lay their hat on remote viewing. It was part of other information. Yeah. And, you know, remote viewing is a fascinating thing. And so we're captivated by it. We're fascinated by it as well. And it's interesting. It's interesting until it's proven absolutely true. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. Yeah, don't quit your job based on right. this video, right? Like, yeah. and you know, don't do other drastic things. So thank you, gentlemen, uh, as always individually, when I talked to you both, it was a pleasure and it's great to see you both on the same video. So it's a pleasure having you both on. Thanks, thank you, Sean. gentlemen. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit like and subscribe and also hit the notification button. So you can be notified whenever I post new content. Thank you. Now, if you're enjoying the channel and you want to support it, there are several things you can do. In fact, there are five things you can do. The first thing you can do is just buy my books. I got plenty of books out in the market right now, and I would prefer that folks buy a book rather than giving me direct support because they get something out of it. They have a real tangible product. The second way you can support me is by becoming a member on YouTube or becoming a patron on Patreon. And just go to either site and it'll explain everything. Third way you can support the channel is by checking out my merch site, which is here. There's plenty of stuff that you can get to support the channel. And I'd appreciate that you, you have it and can wear it. Not only do you help support the channel, but you also help promote the channel. And I appreciate that. The fourth way that you can support the channel, and this is really easy, is anytime you want to buy something on Amazon, literally just go to the description below and click on any link, literally any link. The channel gets a cut of that, and it costs you no extra money. You just go through the link as I'm part of the Amazon Affiliates Club. The fifth and final way you can support the channel is through donations. Now, I don't prefer these because it's more of an expression of gratitude, but you don't really get anything out of it as a subscriber to the channel. However, if you decide to do these options, there's two options. There's Buy Me a Coffee, which is a separate site, and there's also you can go through YouTube with either a Super Chat, a Super Sticker, or a Super Thanks. Again, I prefer Buy Me A Coffee because that organization takes less money than Amazon does. But either way, I appreciate any support you, you are willing to give the channel. So thank you very much and keep watching. I really appreciate it.